Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, John, you're so sexy. Why don't you paint these ugly monstrosities and uh, make them look better, too? Well, I would, but it's so freaking cold out here in Canada land that the abominable snow monster froze off his... That's how cold it is here in Canada land. So, I would paint it, but... If it's too cold for the abominable snow monster, then that means it's too cold for paint. Yep, they work. This is why I'm sick of winter. That's ice on there. Freak sakes. How you doing, Buster? Is the snow way too deep? Way too much snow? You sniff it, buddy? What is it? Does it smell like fish tacos? Oh my goodness, that's delicious. Fish tacos, I can smell it already. <laughs> I've been outside with the shovel, digging and looking. I think it's been hours I've been digging. And uh, finally found what I was looking for. You can barely tell it's there, but this is the back of the junk buggy, the DIY side by side. And I was getting starting to get frustrated, but I just turned into a machine. I just started digging, digging up everything everywhere, <laughs> looking for this thing. So I found it. That's awesome. This is a homemade converted trailer hitch. It's a trailer hitch off of a truck converted into a three point hitch adapter. Well, there she is. So this is just a trailer hitch that I converted last year into a three point hitch adapter. It's actually upside down. Towmaster. Yeah. There. So it sort of goes like that. And uh, I know it's not much to look at, but it works pretty good. I used it on the Project Stormtrooper lifted trailblazer last year. And yeah, she seemed to seemed to work. It held up quite a bit of weight because the plow is pretty heavy. It's a pretty heavy three-point hitch attachment off of like an agricultural three-point hitch attachment. So they're pretty heavy and this thing held up fine. So maybe, uh, maybe I'll put it to use again. Maybe. Okay, so I got this here thing here. 
Check out this piece of equipment. Oh my goodness. So this is a trailer hitch from a truck. I think it was from a Ford truck, but last year I converted it. I cut the ends off and bent them or yeah, I put them here. So you can put uh, two point or three point attachments, agricultural attachments on. So I've made a couple of plows and uh, made one on the Suzuki and uh, that was a couple years back. I made it from a furnace oil tank and last year I put this on the back of the Project Stormtrooper and I put a three point hitch plow and I plowed snow with it, plowed the, the driveway over the winter with it. So I don't I don't have the big winch anymore or the I think it was a four thousand pound. I don't have that anymore. But this is an old super winch. It's only two thousand pounds, but it might it might lift the three point the three point attachments or the agricultural attachments. That three point plow is a heavy it's a heavy piece, heavy piece of equipment. Okay, we got the winch bolted on there. So that seems pretty good. Nice and secured on there. It's on a bit of an angle so the line can spool towards the top of the third point. Um, I couldn't find the small fair lead. I do have like a fair lead here, but you know, that's way to the wrong size. But there's no crossbars on this winch here. So I think it'll be fine without one. Uh, found this. This might help a lot with the, uh, I planned on using this anyway for the speed, but this might help a lot with the uh, torque and power and stuff. Mechanical advantage, that's a snatch block pulley. So we might get some mechanical advantage there. And we've got some of these pins for the trailer hookup and I got this I made this really simple it's just a connector so it connects your two inch hitch to your to your two inch hitch <laughs> pretty pretty simple and straightforward it's just a two inch square block and I drilled some holes in it and it's had quite a bit of weight on it that plow is pretty heavy I think but it seems to work good seems to work okay so I'll put I got two of these pins here I'll stick these in there just like that And, uh, and now that'll fit into the back of, of a pickup truck or a SUV or anything with a two inch square hitch. And on the other end, you got these two here for your, for your two points to pivot on. And your third point runs off the winch. So your winch can uh, make a pivot point and pull it lift your attachment up and down. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, John, you're so sexy. Why don't you paint these ugly monstrosities and uh, make them look better too? Well, I would, but it's so freaking cold out here in Canadia land that the abominable snow monster froze off his goodies. That's how cold it is here in Canadia land. So I would paint it, but if it's too cold for the abominable snow monster, then that means it's too cold for paint. Yeah, so this neutral gear seems to be stuck. So I gave her the old, uh, oh goodness, that's not good. Look at the ice in there and everything, see? Yeah, real, real Canadian ice right there. 
That's how you know it's cold here in Canada land. Anywho, so we got these here booster cables. Yep, they work. And I've got them hooked up to a battery that's not completely dead. So I'm gonna see if it'll turn, if it'll do anything. She's been sitting for a minute. Hey, it works. Wow, she's noisy. There, now the neutral gear might work. Yeah, there we go. Give her a spray. Maintenance. Better late than never. That's the opposite of preventative maintenance. Let's try reverse. Reverse polaritis. Reverse polarity. Oh goodness. She's super, super noisy, but, but it works. So let's go ahead and slip this on this pick em up truck here. Okay, she's a little bit close to the ground, so the project uh, project stormtrooper it had a lift kit and it had a perky perky booty to begin with. The booty was pretty perky. This truck does not have a perky booty. I'm not too sure about this uh, about this truck. It seems to be a little bit saggy in the ass end this truck. So maybe it's got a broken leaf spring. I'll have to double check it and make sure. But I think that might be good enough. That might be enough ground clearance there. Once you put some weight on it, once I put the plow on it, she might settle down a couple, she might settle down an inch or two. I'm not sure. Who knows? Maybe uh, maybe we can find some way to perk perk up the suspension on this truck. Yeah. Maybe in the future we'll get to plow with it or work on it or something. I think this might be a good candidate for uh, for some cheap mods or DIY mods. So I'm slightly concerned a little bit. Um, I can fit my hand in just barely between the tire and the fender here. Just if I if I use my thumb, I can just barely get it in there. So this truck has oversized wheels on it, 18 by 10 inch wheels, 265, 70, 18 tires, and I don't think it has a lift. I think they're factory. I think that's a factory suspension. So this here. This hitch is kind of, kind of close to the ground. I wish it was a little bit higher. I wish the truck was a little bit higher actually, so I might have to do something about that. And uh, I think the leaf springs, I think the leaf springs are flattened right out. I checked them to see if they're broken, but I don't see any broken springs anywhere. The frame on this on this truck's in good shape. Pretty good shape. Passenger side has a little bit of damage. And has some damage here also. But on the passenger side I can't even get 
can't, can't even barely get two fingers in. So I thought maybe the box was sagging a bit, but the body lines, they seem to line up. So I don't think the box is sagging. I figured it was a broken, a broken leaf spring, but I don't see a broken leaf spring anywhere. I don't see, but they do seem to be sagging quite a bit. These leaf springs seem to be worn out. So maybe this truck has carried some heavy loads. Maybe they used it for a trailer and maybe it jackknifed. This could be from a trailer jackknifing, perhaps. This truck has a little, little one inch spacer between the leaf spring and the differential. So maybe it could go with a two inch spacer or something, get, get an extra inch out of it. So it's a little bit weird to me that the driver's side has more clearance in the fender well, unless, unless there's a broken leaf spring that I can't see on the other side. But they both, both sides seem to be worn out. The leaf springs seem to be flattened out or sagging a bit. So that might be one reason. I think if the suspension wasn't so sagged out, this might be a little bit more perky, but let's see what I can see what I can do. That might be okay. I made some more holes in the connector piece and I tried to tuck it in as much as I could without getting too close to the trailer hitch or without getting too close to the bumper. So I got it tucked in a little bit more. I'm glad that it has all those holes. So I can just sort of adjust it where I want it well I got her hooked up and I just ran some wires through the box for now and I have the controller in the front seat and there's a little battery in the back seat a separate independent battery which should be fine for now seems to work